Good day, good morning, good night, wherever you're listening from. Welcome to a brand new episode of Manny Can. And then, you know, what a great way to open 2021. You know, my goal with this podcast is to interview or have former players, whether they're Chargers or NFL players. And I had the privilege to open up 2021 with the Chargers Hall of Famer. He's the special teams player. You know, sometimes you either love him or hate him. But, you know, I have the same amount of respect, whether you're a kicker or a punter as a defensive back, quarterback, whatever you play in the field, because you both put in the same work. So our very first guest that has played in the pros and opening the season or the year of 2021 from Sydney, Australia. He played in the Australian Rules Football, the NFL, former San Diego Chargers from 95 to 03, and Minnesota Vikings from 04, from 04 to 05, has two Pro Bowls, two All Pros, and 1990s All Decades team, and is in the Chargers Hall of Fame. Please welcome former partner number two, Darren Bennett. Okay, Manny, how are you, mate? I am great. How are you, Darren? I, very well. Thank I, you very well. I'm thrilled to have you here. You know, obviously, you started, you played right when I became a fan. You ended your career. Yep. So I had to do some research. And let me just tell you, you, a player coming from Australia, that that had me curious, the journey, the process. You know, if you can talk about your days when you were in Australia, how that started. Yeah, so playing uh, Australian rules football in, in Australia and, and across, I, I uh, started in, in Sydney and in Melbourne and then went across to Perth on the West Coast. Uh, a lot of good uh, athletes come and play in the, the AFL, uh, Australian Rules Football League. And so our system is like a minor system. You play in the underage uh, leagues and work your way up into the minor leagues, which would, I played at a team called East Fremantle. Uh, went through and now the Perth teams, there's two uh, major league teams in Perth and I was on the inaugural team for the West Coast Eagles, which is now one of the powerhouses of, of the AFL, but I played on the very first team they ever played in 1987. So I worked my way through that, had a lot of injuries over my career. I had a lot of uh, bad knee injuries. And so, you know, by the time I got to Melbourne and played over there for a few years, uh, my legs were starting to sort of fall apart running wise, but still had strong a strong kick. And my strength coach over there used to come across, he was a real good friend of Norb Turner's. So they went to college in Oregon together and he would come to training camp and sort of find out new coaching and training techniques of the NFL and take them back to Australia. So he said to me, look, you know, you're about to finish your AFL career. You You really can't run like you could run before. And so, but you can still kick the ball. How about you try playing American football? And no one had done it for years. We had a couple of guys in the 60s and one guy in the 80s do it, but I was the first in a long time. And so, you know, it was one of those challenges in life that you, to to try and change my my skills across to another code. Uh, I was fortunate enough that, um, you know, his name was Chris Jones. He had a few people in, in the NFL that he knew that ran the NFL Combine and they looked at teams that were looking for punters and the San Diego Chargers just happened to be one of those. And so, you know, the other two teams were the Jets and New York scared me. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to the New York Jets and and Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers were looking for a punter at the time. And I didn't even know where Tampa Bay was. So, you know, San Diego seemed to be a logical place to go and take a look and see. And so they arranged for me to have a tryout and I won a long kicking contest in Australia. And the first prize was two tickets to Los Angeles. So my wife and I, Rosemary and I, we used it as a honeymoon. We came across and while we were here on the honeymoon, I got a tryout and had a tryout with the Chargers then. So you came to San Diego and then I, I got to ask, you know, how was the environment? How were they welcoming or? They were very intrigued, obviously. You know, having an Australian was a weird thing, someone that had never played the game before. I was really fortunate. Um, I had Bobby Ross was my head coach. And Bobby Bethard, who Bobby Bethard is probably, well, he's in the Hall of Fame now as a, as a general manager. 
both with the Washington Redskins and the San Diego Chargers, took two teams to the Super Bowl, which I don't think many general managers have ever done that. So the great thing about Bobby was he, he was an outside-the-box thinker and, and really ahead of his time with a lot of the things that he did as far as management was concerned and bringing people in. So he had been at Kansas City years and years ago when Jan Stenerud from Sweden was their kicker. And so people were saying, well, you can't have an Australian, you know, they don't know the game. And he said, well, I had Jan Stenerud when I was at Kansas City. And so he understood that we brought our own skill level to the game. And so they were very welcoming. And then I had a special teams coach named Chuck Prefer. Chuck was one of the best for probably 20 years. He went with Bobby Ross to Detroit and had a great career over there after his career in San Diego. But we were always in the top five in the NFL statistically. And the great thing about Chuck was Chuck is a maths and history major and, and a very, very structured person. And so he taught me to pun American style from day one. And he really took me back to the beginning and said, look, you've got a lot of athletic um, talent that none of us have ever seen, but you don't know the game. And so he taught me right from the very, like if you took a kid that punted his very first time, Chuck took me back to that. And I've forever benefited from that, of, of him doing that and being prepared to do that. Uh, and I think it's really held me in, in a strong technical sense from then on. You know, from up until then, I was just swinging my leg as hard as I could. And he taught me so much about the game. And so... I'm forever thankful to Bobby Bethard, Bobby Ross and Chuck Free for, for putting in the extra effort that it took to develop me. And, you know, I've been trying to repay those guys in American football ever since. You played it. Was it Jack Murphy or Qualcomm at the time? It was, I was there in the transition. Actually, I was there. I was the spokesperson, or not spokesperson. I was one of the representatives of the Chargers when they renamed it Qualcomm Stadium. Um, I, I actually represented the Chargers there that night when they went from Jack Murphy to Qualcomm Stadium. So, yeah, I was there for both. Yeah, so in case that people that don't know, uh, Qualcomm is being demolished right now as we speak. It's yes, I saw that. I saw some of the photos. It's very sad and also very exciting for San Diego State to be yeah. able to have, you know, that facility to go into the future now that the Chargers have gone to Los Angeles. Yeah. I, I'm excited to see the new stadium. It's unfortunate because um, I only had one Charger game there and then a bunch of other Aztecs. And when they tried bringing the, was it the AFL, or the, the second or third division football yeah. state league? Yeah, the AAF, I think it was. I, yeah. I, I can't remember, actually. Yeah, I was there for a couple of those and a couple of college ball games, you know. So you talked about your injuries. How was the... Have you ever had a setback thinking, oh, I think I'm done? You, you said 20 surgeries? Yeah, so the, the hard part, the great thing for me was I started very young. I, I was a uh, junior in high school, and then into my senior year, I started playing in the minor leagues while I was at school. It's sort of that sort of system where you can play for your school, you can play for a club team, and you can play in the minors while you were still at high school. So it's very unusual to do it at 16 and 17 years of age, but I was fortunate to do that. The downside of that was I was still a young man with a developing body playing against grown men. And I really got knocked around when I first started. So my, my um, athletic prowess was I was, I was a leaper. I was, I would jump over the top of other guys to mark the ball. Um, the downside of that is you always landed awkwardly. And I, I got injured quite a lot. So I injured my ankle, I injured my knees, and then it sort of spiraled into a lot of a lot of um, a lot of surgeries. So by the time I was 22, you know, I had people telling me I would never play football again, um, which served as a motivator, but it was also, you know, it was a very it was a big slap in the face because it was the thing that I thought I was good at in life. So to be told you'll never do it again was a big motivation. So, but I I almost had to step back for nearly two years rehab a big a really big knee surgery and then right at the point where i was about to say okay i don't think i'll play again a team in melbourne called me and said and which was the team was actually called melbourne the melbourne demons they called me and said look let us do an assessment on it even though the team has said you're never going to play again um what have you been doing and i'd been doing a lot of bike riding and, and strengthening my legs up 
so they took me to Melbourne and they did some testing on me and they said, no, we think you're good. And, and I'm so glad they did because I played another five and a half years after that. Um, and it, it really then, you know, allowed me to meet people who, who helped me out, you know, on the NFL track. So if I'd never done that, I think it would have been a different life path for me. So I was very happy and glad I stuck with it over those couple of years. So take us back to your first game. The first time you're going to punt, what was going through your excitement? You know, Australian kid, man, going into the NFL, having an opportunity to play. What, what was the environment? What were you feeling? So my first year, I was on practice squad my first year at the Chargers, but I played in preseason that year. And I remember punting against, uh, at the time, it was the LA Rams before they went to St. Louis. And then obviously they've come back to LA again. And I was still sort of in Aussie, Aussie rules shape. And so Chuck had to pull me aside on the sideline and say, look, do you know what a safety looks like? And I'm like, well, Rodney Harrison's a safety. And he goes, no, no, you have to play safety. You can't, because I would punt and run down with the front with the front line guys. And he's like, "There's no, if he gets through, there's you're the guy. You're supposed to be the safety. So it took me a little while. I was so excited and so fired up. Uh, I think I outkicked my coverage every punt that preseason. And I was running down in the front line with guys. So they had to slow me down and teach me how to become a safety, which helped me in my rookie year. I made a tackle or a couple of tackles in my rookie year. So, but if I'd still been doing that, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And then when I played the following, I went to NFL Europe and played in Amsterdam, which got me 10 games of experience. And I think a lot of things went wrong and a lot of things went right that year. So it allowed me to learn how to adjust during a game. But my first real game in a live game as the punter was the first game that the Raiders went back to Oakland after being in Los Angeles. So we're playing on the baseball field, which is a slippery and hard place to punt. Um, if you look at that, if you look at me punting in the background here at the bottom here, I'm still, that's at Qualcomm. I'm on the baseball field. So when that, when that was going on, you know, there was still three teams. There was Miami, the Dolphins, the Raiders and the Chargers. Actually, and I think before uh, at Candlestick too, the 49ers still played on baseball as well. So we would play on bait, which, I mean, it's crazy. It's like concrete during summer. But I was playing on the baseball field at the Oakland A Stadium for the Raiders' first game. And so I don't think I got one football up in the air of my punts because they had the best punt blocker and I was punting to Tim Brown, who's in the Hall of Fame. So they said... If you get one blocked, we'll, we'll cut you. If you get one returned for a touchdown, we'll cut you. So I think the get-offs were so fast. I don't remember much of it except that the Raiders fans are crazy and the game actually happened and they didn't cut me the next week. So I knew that I'd at least got a second game in. But it was it was exciting and a lot of fun. And, and I, I love playing at the Raiders over the years. I thought it, it was a great place to play. It was a rivalry game for your first game. Yes, it was. And, and being back in Oakland, they were even more crazy because yes. they were so happy happy to have them back up there, you know? I, I heard a, a lot of stories and seen a lot of videos on the internet when the Chargers go play at Oakland. And I can bet it was pretty loud and rowdy. The great thing about the Raiders fans, they're so passionate about their team, they would get the Chargers media guide and they would look at your history and they would find something to scream at you about. So you would be, you know, normally people just go, you suck, or they yell at you from the sideline, and it's sort of generic, you know, we don't like you sort of stuff. The Raiders would go, you know, they would talk about Rosemary or they would talk about the boys or they would find something about the media guy that would try and get you off their game. They were very intelligent when they were, as, uh, you know, yelling at you. They, they knew what they were talking about. So that's I sort of appreciated that. Yeah. Okay, so now that we talked about your first game, what was a memorable game for you that you punted in? Well, the, the one a lot of people talk about was my fourth game. I, we played in Pittsburgh and uh, I hit a punt which outkicked my courage 65 yards. And uh, Andre Hastings, the returner, came back and I was running down as fast as I could and I came face to face with him. And one of my good friends, Jim Laslovic, who I did some radio with after I retired, we used to do the Chargers pregame show on the on the Rock 105. Laz was doing the commentary at the time, 
and and the returner came up and I clotheslined him and knocked him on the ground. And I think that year it got me voted to the Pro Bowl because people had never seen a punter clothesline someone like that. But really, honestly, I didn't know what to do. So I just hit him as hard as I possibly could and I knocked him on his butt. You know, so my podcast is about adversity or overcoming obstacles. Yeah. Obviously, you with your 20 surgeries. But also, I like to find out who are some people that helped them or they look up to, you know. For me, like I said, it, it's a former teacher, my parents, friends. Who is someone that keeps you motivated or kept you motivated? So I had a lot of people help me along the way. Uh, as you do on a long journey. You know, I played 23 years of professional football in two different codes. And so, you know, when I first got injured, as a young man, as a 17-year-old, you sort of get a little disheartened and, and lose confidence. And so my my head coach, a guy named Ron Alexander, took me under his wing. Uh, our strength coach, Tom Hodges, got me there. And, and Tom, the great thing about Tom Hodges, he was, he was a professor of human movement science and he liked doing things that weren't related to your sport so he had me playing water polo he had me play badminton he made me ride the bike and what he was really doing was he was taking my mind off what was making what was hurting which was not playing football and so I was doing the work and it was a, it's a bit like have you ever seen the karate kid it's karate. a bit like the yeah the karate kid yeah. movie where he makes, him, he makes him paint a fence and wax on, wax off, and he wonders what it's for, but then he realises it's actually the movements of the martial arts. And that's really what he was doing with me, was he was making me do other athletic things that took my mind off rehabbing and knee surgery, but it was making me strong and athletic at the time. And so I think without Tom Hodges, I would have quit and gone away. And so, you know, and then once I got to the charges, obviously I've mentioned... Bobby Bethard, Bobby Ross, and, and Chuck Prefer, who, who then took the time out of their extremely busy schedule to teach an Australian who didn't play the, had never played the game before all the little details. A lot of people get caught up in the big numbers of football, but Chuck taught me the little details of how to catch a snap, where to be on the field, how to do it in equipment, how to punt the ball consistently. I could hit a 90-yard punt, when I first got here, but I could also hit a 12 yard pun. And Chuck just said to me, that's going to get me fired. So he taught me how to get rid of those 90 yard punts and doing, doing that eliminated the 12 yard. punt. And then the last person, not, I mean, I've had a lot of people as well since I've been over here, but John Carney, who was the, the uh, kicker at the time when I was at the Chargers, we had a, a really good tradition and I passed it on to Mike Cypress and hopefully there's a guy named Lachlan Edwards on practice squad and now just signed a futures deal. Who's one of, he's almost like my other son. He's at the charges right now. And so hopefully if he wins the job next year, we'll pass the baton to him for another year is we were taught to pass on your knowledge, to give it to someone behind. And John Carney really passed a lot to me about what it means to be a professional athlete in American football, in the NFL, attention to detail and, and so I, I'm, you know, forever grateful for him giving me that opportunity to learn from him. And it, one of the, he's still doing it today. He's still mentoring and coaching and, and passing on his knowledge to people. So it was tremendous to me that uh, I had people like that that would help me on the way. So is this what I saw on in an article where you would host a couple athletes and teach them how to not mentor them? Yes. So, so over the years, we've had probably, so I've retired since 2005. So in the last 15 years, we've probably had nearly a hundred people stay with us. And we've had Australians. There's, there's a bunch of Australians in NCAA football punting right now. There's uh, uh, three or four guys in the NFL. We've had a lot of the guys that have played over the years, Australians and non-Australians come and stay with us. And really what I was trying to do is do what Chuck did for me is pass that knowledge on. Uh, some of them learn all of it. Some of them learn part of it. But if you can pass on just a little bit of it. So we would mentor and coach and, and we would have groups of 10, 15 guys out punting and five of them would, would be staying at our house. And, you know, uh, a lot of that is uh, credit to my son, William, who, 
uh, is in a wheelchair uh, like yourself and has muscular dystrophy. And uh, they would learn life from him and they would learn hunting from me. And so part of Will was part of our mentoring and he coached with me at La Costa Canyon in Carlsbad when he was at high school. Uh, and so that to me is my obligation to pass on what I've learned because somebody to pass it to me. Yeah, that's a very strong thing that I believe. If you learn something or if you are taught something by someone, it's always important to pass on the knowledge. And I think what you and your son are teaching these next coming punters who hope to punt at a semi-pro or pro level is excellent. Thank you. Yeah, look, we, we used to have Sunday sessions with uh, Michael Husted, who was a kicking coach that I was really close with at Santa Fe Christian. And sometimes we'd have 50 guys on the field and they'd be anyone from Pop Warner punters and kickers through to all pros. That was the cool thing about it is, a, you know, a 12 year old kid could come and punt with us. And Matt McBriar, who's a two time all pro that lives in Solana Beach, played for the Cowboys could walk out and punt with, on the field with them. And so these kids could learn from the best that ever played the game. Uh, and that's why I thought it was really cool. And we still do it today. And, you know, once COVID slows down and we all get our vaccinations and everything, you know, we'll get back to doing it again. We've got a big group of kids coming from Australia this year. We've got all the guys that are around that have graduated that are trying to make the NFL. And Tulsa is a really nice central place for them to come. So we'll, we'll continue to do it. You know, we do it by Zoom, like we're, I'm doing with you right now. But um, once once we get to do it live again, uh, University of Tulsa allows me to use their football field here. And so it's a lot of fun to have a bunch of guys out there. And sometimes as the mentor, you, the real mentorship is just putting them all on the field at the same time. And then they teach each other, which is cool. Yeah. So besides after the NFL, you mentioned you did a little bit of radio you mentor these up and coming punters. What is something else that, well, I don't know, or other people don't know that you've been up to? So my big thing is architecture. You know, I've grown up uh, in Australia. Uh, we love different types of architecture. I'm looking out my office window right here at a house that we're building right now. So uh, I did some uh, work flipping houses in Australia. I love fishing. Uh, I take my son Thomas fishing. Um, he he obviously, uh, he graduated in May last year and didn't have a graduation because COVID hit. And so found it difficult to find a job here in Tulsa. So he works with me every day building this house. And um, and we do a lot of fishing together. And I think it's a great way for parents and kids to, to bond and learn over different things. And fishing is one of those nice relaxation times where we can go and fishing is really good here in Oklahoma. So we love doing it. I learned how to fish over the years, but I haven't done it in a while. But I'm, I really want to go back to it. Yeah. The great thing is where you are in San Diego, you can fish for trout up in the streams. You could fish for bass in, there's some really good lakes around. And then the ocean fishing is fantastic in San yeah. Diego. And even the bay fishing in San Diego Bay is really good. So, you know, it's a, you're, I'm in a good place to learn how to fish here. And you're in a good place over there as well. Yes. How old are you, Manny? I am 18. I am a freshman in Palomar College. Or Palomar College. Now, where did college. you go to high school? Where did you go to high school? So my high school is brand new. So it, it wasn't, it's Tawago Academy. It's an Escondido. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so Palomar Junior College. So I have one of my punters is, uh, so all my, I'll, I'll back it up. All my coaches at La Costa Canyon, the head coach came from Palomar. And so, some of the coaches that he coached with are still at Palomar. They've been there for 25, 30 years. And so one of the old guys that mentored my head coach called me one day and said, if you ever have someone that wants to go to junior college, I'd love to have them. And he was really talking about my son, Thomas, but I had an Australian guy come over and want to go to junior college. So I sent him to Palomar. His name was Tyson Dyer and he hunted two years at Palomar, had a great time. I actually only punted one season at Palomar because he was a really he was a really good student. And then he went to University of New Mexico and he's been punting at New Mexico. And right now he's going to get himself a COVID test and I'm going to get one here and he's going to drive over from Albuquerque and I'm going to get him ready for his pro day. And hopefully uh, if he can, if he can possibly do it, he'll make the NFL coming from Palomar. So it's a great school. Do you, are you in the, are you in the, uh, 
the audio visual um, program over there? Is that what you're doing with your with your podcast and stuff? Um, I'm more in the journalistic journalism class. I yeah. Am to transfer. One of Thomas's best friends, Jack Whittington, he did he did the um, uh, the the TV TV and broadcasting uh, program over there. Yes. So I went and did it. I did an interview with him over there uh, in the studio at Palomar. It's pretty cool. They've got a great system, great uh, a great setup over there. That's something I'm trying to get into. Hopefully, after we're allowed to go back in campus. So, uh, and what? So, what's your long term program like plan? Do you want to become? Do you want to commentate games? Do you want to do journalism? Like, do you want I, to do? I feel like I want to do a little bit of everything. You know, I yeah. want to write about it. And then I also want to become like a sideline reporter, you know. Well, the guy that put us together, Jay Paris, is one of the best ever. He is. He's, he's, he's been yeah, a great he friend. He he actually, uh, for those of you that don't know my podcast, I knew he wrote, he released an article a couple of days ago, you know, telling me about myself and promoting it. Yeah, on the Coast News, that's it. That's the one he sent me to introduce me to who you were. So. Yes. Um, well, if you look up and, and if you can't find it, ask Jay because Jay will have it. So when we first moved back from Minnesota to Carlsbad, uh, Jay said to me, I want to do a story about, uh, I, I bought a, uh, like one of those shuttle buses you get when you go to the airport to get rent a car. I bought one of those with a wheelchair lift in it. And we used to drive our whole neighborhood to school two days a week. And so Jay, when he wrote for the um, North County Times, I think it was when he was writing for it. It's called it's called Will's Magic Bus, but he came and sat on the bus and went to school with all our kids, and uh, and and did a story on all the kids and the and the bus ride to school. It was so much fun. So Jay's been a tremendous friend over the years, really top guy, and and continues one of those his friendship. Yes. What's that? He continues doing what he does best. Well, he, and so Jay's doing that for you. He's mentoring. You know, yeah, it's, he he's is. just one of the yeah, it's just one of those great guys. And his son Connor, um, you know, not not necessarily because of our conversations, but he went and studied in Australia because of, you know we I talk about it so much. And and he one of Jay's best friends is a guy named Rod Laver, who's one of the best tennis players ever to play. And so between me, me and Rod, uh, Connor got so fired up he went to Australia to study. So. You know, Jay's one of my really, in, in in media, there's not a lot of people you can trust because they always have a different conversation that they want to write about. Jay was never like that. Jay's always one of the most honest, upfront guys. I, I really appreciate it. And he's Liam been doing it for a while. Years. Oh, a long time. Yeah, a yes. long time. Yeah. So what what got you into this? What Why, why did you decide this is it for you? Do you I'm, love sports? I'm Do you actually... love journalism? I'm glad you asked, you know, for a very long time, you know, I want to say from elementary to sixth grade, I was in love with sports. You know, I grew up with the household for back then when my whole family were Charger fans, you know, ever since yeah. I moved to LA, they've been, they got a little bit mad. So I'm the only one that stayed a Charger. I always wanted to be in the play, whether it was Pop Warner, because my closest cousin, was played Pop Warner, or I wanted to be physically active and involved with football, soccer, you yeah. know. And then, obviously, with my physical disability, doctors told me, you know, Manny, we, we can't have you doing that. We're afraid that you might get hurt. And then, you know, for a while, I took that in. And then I, I the first part of my, before I transitioned to what I wanted to do, I was a little bit negative on myself, you know. I always say, no, I don't want to do that. No, no was the word that was always stuck with me. So eighth, seventh grade, I found out about reporters and journalists. And I'm like, you know what? I If I can't play, I want to talk about it or be with the player or an organization. And then so last year, I'm like, you know what? Well, why don't I start now? I want to make a podcast and and work my networks. And then I met Jay, and then from Jay I met others, and then I got you, which I was thrilled and excited once I found out that you played for one of my one of my favorite teams. 
So I had a guy, uh, when I went to NFL Europe, I mentioned it during the podcast, that uh, have, we had all, the training camp, because it was fir the first year of NFL Europe, they didn't send us to Europe right to begin with. We all went to Atlanta and we went to training camp together all in the one start city so that we could scrimmage against each other without having to fly across Europe. And then after we finished training camp, then we flew to our different cities around Europe to play. And then we played them, you know. So because we had everyone in the same city, the NFL employed a guy as like a kicking consultant. And he was super instructive and very good. His name was Doug Levins. He had cerebral palsy. He came out on the field with CP and all these guys are like, whoa. How's this guy going to teach us? And he knew more about kicking and punting than all of us put together. And so that's why he'd been the kicking assistant, kicking coach at the Miami Dolphins. And then he, he, he did it um, at Philadelphia afterwards. And he also then came on when I was at the Minnesota Vikings, they were having trouble with their kickers. And so they brought Doug in for a year and he was our kicking assistant at Minnesota and he met Will when Will was first in his wheelchair. When we went to Minnesota, he transitioned into his wheelchair at the age of eight. And Doug rolled straight up to him in his wheelchair and said, you can do anything you want. You don't have to uh, limit yourself to the wheelchair. Look at me. And at the time, Doug wasn't even in a powered chair. He got into the powered chair in his second year, but he was in a manual chair and he would push himself backwards with his feet around to get from kicker to punter to kicker to punter. And so that was very inspirational to Will. And then when we went to La Costa Canyon, John Sovacol, who his father was a Lieutenant Colonel in the Marines, just a tremendous, tremendous guy, came up to me and he, I knew he was trying to get me to coach at, at high school. And he said, I heard coach Will is really observant when it comes to kicking and punting. Have you ever thought about letting him coach? And I said, I never, yes. I mean, he coaches with me on the field, but I never thought about him doing it. And so Sean Sovacol taking a chance on having Will, but getting me as part of that coaching group, you know, having the two of us together was so fantastic. Gave him a, such a great identity during his high school years. And he coached for five or six years, even after he graduated, we would go down and work with their kickers and punters. And he was Coach B. He became Coach Bennett, Coach B from day one. And as some of my favourite times with Will was spent on that field with him coaching those guys. So, you know, it's tremendous. I'm glad you found something you love. And I hope and I hope you do it uh, for a long time. And, and uh, any time you want to have a chat, I'm happy to chat. And it's funny that you t share that story with me because I also had someone that came up to me or sat next to me, frankly, and he, he, he was number 12, retired Colts quarterback, Andrew Luck. He told me, you know, you can do anything you want, Manny. And then that's when it clicked. Like, you know what? I'm going to just chase my dreams, see where this carries me, and continue to have these conversations with awesome guests like you. So think about this, Manny, where you are in history right now, you are the most connected to anyone on earth at any generation. Because when I first came over here, there was no internet, there was no cell phone. So Melbourne, Australia, where my wife's from, is such a long way away. Whereas you could be sitting in the North Pole right now and I could be in Antarctica and we would still do exactly what we're doing right now. So the great thing about you and your pod podcast is you are connected to every human on earth if you want to be. And if, if you can meet people like Jay who can give you exposure, you could talk to Lewis Hamilton from Formula One. You could do anything. That's Will's guy, is Lewis Hamilton. He loves Lewis. So what I'm saying is that the world's your oyster. So I'm glad that you've found a passion that you can that you can push yourself. And it's only as far as you know, people that will help you out and then as far as you want to take it. So I think it's fantastic. It's awesome. Well, thank you very much for being here. And then if you have any advice for anyone who is trying to achieve their dream, whether it's bunning or kicking or any at any level, what is something you would tell them? And 
if you have anything that you're working on or work with, you can shout, your, shout yourself out. Yes, correct. So, so that what I tell young punters and young kickers is that you're not going to be an NFL kicker at 12 years of age. But if we teach you good technique and you learn the correct way, one day you'll develop the body and the mind to take advantage of that good technique. What I don't like is guys that are really good at a young age with bad technique. They're very hard to coach and very hard to change. And when they get to 16, 17, 18, all those little kids that are growing and growing and growing, they pass them because they've learned the right way. So we sometimes it's frustrating for young kids because we try and teach them the right way from the beginning. But we now have, you know, our, one of our classic examples is the punter at New England Patriots. He named Jake Bailey. We've known Jake since he was 13, 14 years of age at Santa Fe Christian. And he's had really good coaching over the years. Plus that, what I was saying before, where he's punted with some of the best. So, you know, Jake is a very as a diligent, hard worker, very smart guy, went to Stanford. But he learned from some of the best. And so his technique now is, I think, one of the best in, in the NFL. And he just went to the Pro Bowl in the AFC. And I'm so proud of Jake because of where he's come from and he was the kid that wanted to learn. So for us with kids, one day you'll take, you'll, you'll grow that body to take advantage of that. And then what I work with right now is we're, we're mentoring and bringing in uh, punters that want to come from Australia to play in the NCAA. So I work for, I work with a group called Punt Factory Australia. There's another academy there that's had guys coming from a, a few years from Australia and uh, but they're very expensive. And so some guys from lower socioeconomic uh, backgrounds can't really afford to pay the amount of money to do it. So, and we prefer to think that we coach better than they do anyway. So um, it's called the Punt Factory. Uh, it's on my Twitter handle as well. So uh, Punt Factory and Punt Factory Australia. And it's the same. We just mentor and we teach and we try and bring those guys over. And, and we have, uh, you know, probably 10 guys right now that are in the NCAA and more coming next year. Uh, if there is links, I will make sure to provide them down below or check them out wherever you're listening from YouTube, Spotify. And other than that, this is Darren Bennett. And we'll see. Thank you for coming and we'll see you all no, on thanks, the next Manny. episode. Nice to chat to you. Thanks, Manny.